Hi, it's Mika Mitchell with Lone Star College Kingwood Library Services. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a works cited citation for an article found on the web using MLA style. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is identify what the elements we need. So in an MLA style, we've got a couple of sentences that we're creating. Our first one is going to be the author. Second element is the title of the source, so the title of the article. And we're going to find the title of the container, which is basically where that article is housed. We won't find the, the subsequent listed ones until we get to publication date. So we just ignore all those and move towards publication date. And the last is location. Where did we find this? So we're creating that cookie trail so that anybody who reads your paper will be able to go back and find exactly what you found. In this video, we're going to use a New York Times article, Katy Perry Loses Copyright Battle over Dark Horse. It was published by Ben Cesario on July 29th of 2019. So the first element was the author. So the easiest thing to do is copy it. You can either hit Control C or right click. and copy it from here. We're then going to go into our Works Cited. So the first thing I want you to always do when you create a Works Cited is go to the Insert tab, hit the Pages option, and select Page Break. What this does is no matter what happens to the body of your paper, if you made edits or something like that, Works Cited will always start on the next page. So underneath the title, we're going to make sure that we're starting back at left align and we're going to right click. And the reason why we right click is so that we keep the text only. This way we keep the formatting the same as the rest of the paper by having it set to Times New Roman size 12 font. So in MLA style, we start with the last name followed by a comma and then first name and a period. What we're going to do is just highlight Ben, drag Ben over. So that's Cesario's first. We're going to put a comma after Cesario and then a period after Ben. I'm going to put a space there and we've got the author done. The second sentence is the title of the article. So let's scroll up. We're going to do the same thing. Highlight it, copy the text, bring it back down, paste text only. And then what we're going to do is because it's a title, the title of the source, the article is housed in something larger, which is the New York Times. It's going to be in quotation marks so that the New York Times can be formatted in italics because it's the crooked house, so to say. So um, I'm going to put quotation marks in front of Katie because the title of the source is its own sentence. We're going to close it out with a period and then the end quote. I'm going to add another space and then we're going to start on the container elements. So we already know it's coming from the New York Times, so we can put that in italics right now. So there's an italics button in our toolbar or you can hit control I. I'm going to type in the New York Times. And I'm going to turn off the italics and put a comma. Container is the only pl place in your paper where you can have a run on sentence. So we won't have any of these other pieces of information, but we will have the publication date. Now you'll notice here in MLA, they do day, month, 
which is abbreviated in year. That's because we don't want extra commas confusing the rest of the information up. And that makes it very, very clear. So let's go to the article. We're going to copy the date and bring it over to our paper. I'm going to right click again, keep text only. Now, it starts off with the day. I'm going to make sure there's a space in between 29 and July. The comma goes after the year. Now, July is a short month, so it can stay like that. Let's say it was August, I'd have AUG, period. Because it's abbreviated and it's a proper name, we have A capitalized and it would be a period afterwards. I'm going to add another space, and that last element is the location. In MLA style, it does not want the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. So when we go to copy it over, let me show you what we're going to do. First thing, you can copy the URL from the toolbar, the address bar. Not every website has a permanent uh, URL. So my preference is always to go find that share button and copy that permanent or tiny URL. So we're going to do that, bring it over, make sure we're pasting keep text only. And before I do anything else, I'm going to add a space. That hyperlinks the URL. That way, no matter what, I can just click onto it and it will take me to that particular article. It's a great time saver for not only you, but any reader who comes along and reads it. So then we can get rid of the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and all those little details. And then I'm going to put a period after the URL to close out the container sentence. The last thing we need to do is also make sure that we're properly formatting this. We're excited. So make sure you highlight it. Go to the paragraph settings. Under the indentation, we're going to make sure under special drop down menu, it's set to hanging. Double check your line spacing like the rest of your paper is in double space and check the don't add spaces between the paragraphs. So last thing, something weird happened. My intact, my sorry, my hanging indentation started within the margin and I don't want that. So I'm just going to bring it over and we're going to fix it using the ruler tool. And that way it's in proper margin format and it looks the way it's supposed to look. And that's a works cited citation for a web article. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us, chat with us, email us. That's a basic format. Those are the basic elements you should have. If you don't have those elements, I really do encourage you to seek out a librarian, maybe find another source, see what else you can find that might have some of that information. Have a great day.